Hey, this is Jamie, the Algebra Instructor for iLearnFastSoftware.com. This video is a small piece of a full lesson from the Algebra Explained series that is available in the Apple App Store. If you need help in Algebra and you want to learn it fast and easy, search for Algebra Explained in the App Store on iTunes. Enjoy this sample video and tell your friends that there is a fun and interesting Algebra series available in iTunes. Hey, this is Jamie from iLearnFastSoftware.com. This lesson is called, The Sign Said $61.5 Million. Hopefully this chapter has shown you some valuable uses of mathematics in the real world. This will be our last lesson before our chapter test. I have one more example I would like to show you before your test. Sooner or later, you are going to see a news story about someone winning a big lottery jackpot, and you're gonna say, that will never happen to me. And guess what? You are probably right. The odds of winning the lottery in Florida are an astronomical 1 in 195,249,054 to be exact. Let's not make the lottery your retirement plan. Actually, let's stop for a moment and think about those odds. 1 in 195 million. That's like me saying I've got a number between 1 and 195 million behind my back. Go ahead and take a guess. It only costs a dollar. Okay, what was your number? Did it match this number? Wanna try again? Hopefully not. Now that you've experienced how incredibly unlikely it is to win the lottery, let me admit that miracles do happen. Someone just won a $61,500,000 jackpot about five miles from my house. However, when I read the story in the news, it said they were actually getting $34,553,793. Well, where did the other $27 million go? You might think taxes, but that's actually not right. They still do have to pay taxes. Taxes could be about $12 million. That would leave about $22,500,000 left. If it wasn't taxes, then what was it? It goes back to our lesson on interest. In general, a dollar tomorrow is worth less than a dollar today. If I asked you, would you rather have $100 today or $100 in 30 years, you wouldn't have to think about that very long now, would you? Since the lottery grand prize is actually paid as one payment a year for 30 years, some of that money isn't due to arrive for over 30 years. Wouldn't you rather have that money today? If the answer is yes, then you're going to have to pay for it. Let's take a look at the formula for computing the present value of regular payments called annuities. PV is the present value for all combined future payments. A is the value for each of the individual payments. N is the number of payments. And I is the interest rate. In this situation, the amount A is 2,050,000 because the lottery is going to split the 61,500,000 into 30 payments. N is 30 because they would receive 30 payments. I is approximately 0.0422 or 4.22%, simply because I said so. Let's substitute these values into the famous formula. What first? Parentheses, parentheses, parentheses. Always start inside the parentheses. 1 plus 0 0.0422 is just 1.0422. What next? We still have parentheses, so we need to work in there as a mini problem. What next? Exponents. We need to take 1.0422 and multiply it by itself 30 times. Or just enter 1.0422 raised to the 30th power in your calculator. What next? We have to do division before subtraction. So let's divide one by 3.45566. If your calculator has a one over X button, now would be a great time to use it. You can use the one over X button to divide one by 3.5566 to get 0.28937. Do the subtraction to get 0.7106. Now back to our full problem. You might be tempted to round that long decimal. Don't do it. We are dealing with lots of money here. 
You only round money when you get your final answer. What next? Division. PEMDAS tells us to do multiplication or division in order from left to right. In this problem, division appears before multiplication. Once we complete the division, we have this. Now we can multiply. And now we can finally round to get $34.5 million. So that's the story of how $61,500,000 became about $34,500,000 before taxes. Aren't you glad that not all of our practice problems involve such large numbers? I know I am. But big or small, the ideas are all the same. If you keep the order of operations straight, there is no limit to what you can do. Good luck on your practice problems. As always, I recommend doing all 10 problems. Bye.